This is just a quick uh, brief overview of my uh, Skywatcher all view mount uh, with the sync scan Wi Fi adapter. So I was using the um, all view and for both astronomical and for panoramic and video panoramic viewing, which is uh, a thing that is really well suited toward. And I was using the hand controller and, uh, and I was having some trouble with my hand controller and it was uh, the older version of the hand controller. So rather than buy a newer version of a SyncScan uh, version four uh, hand controller, is that I decided to go with the SyncScan Wi-Fi dongle instead. And so here's my basic setup, is that I've got a uh, portable battery pack here. Uh, I think it's a 5,000 milliamp hour uh, uh, battery pack. And that uh, powers my camera, which is a Lumix GH3. And then also it powers the uh, the lens heater uh, to prevent frost and dew. And so this is a kind of a wide angle time lapse setup. And obviously I can't uh, film with my phone at the same time that I use the uh, phone as a controller for the Wi-Fi. But you want to get the SyncScan app for your uh, device, whether it be an uh, uh, iOS device or an Android device or a PC. And then that will allow you some controls with the Skywatcher all view mount. And of course that works with um, many other uh, Skywatcher mounts, including the, uh, the AZ GTI, which is a, the kind of the newest version of this type of uh, mount. So how I've got this connected, which is not all that pretty, is that I have a uh, power sub, uh, ad adapter uh, for the uh, telescope mount, for the all view mount, which is a 12 volt power adapter. And then I also have a 12 volt power adapter for the battery pack up here. The connections to the all view mount are the Wi-Fi dongle, which goes into the hand controller port, and then 12 volt power. And then there is also the snap camera remote cable. And so I've got that hooked into the uh, GH3, and that allows me to do some uh, camera control, at least uh, trip the shutter on the camera from the SyncScan app which is really handy. And then the other thing that I actually have is a Lumix Link app that hooks via Wi-Fi to the camera. So I can also do camera control through that app for, uh, for doing you know, picture sequences and uh, time lapse and that sort of thing with the camera. So that's just a, uh, one thing kind of to note is that, that I, f I kind of found out after a long uh, time is that this is considered the back of the uh, mount. And so when you want to do a polar alignment or you want to put it into a uh, configuration where it's facing north, this would be the south side of the mount. And you can see that the arm is in the out position and it is on the uh, left-hand side if I'm facing north. And then uh, the side with the power switch on it is actually the front side, or uh, if you're kind of going to a home position of north, is that would be facing north. And of course, I've aligned the tripod up so that this leg is actually facing true north and so that makes it a lot easier to align. Okay, so now I'm going to do a uh, iPhone screen recording of uh, using the SyncScan app with my Skywatcher all-view mount. 
So I've got that categorized in my astronomy folder here. And so I'll launch the sync scan app and it shows that the location is updated by the phone to the app. And we have a connect button here at the top. And so I'll tap on the connect. There it went to the Wi-Fi. And then I am have this in hibernate mode in which uh, I've already had it aligned and it is sitting at what is called the home position which is facing north and level on the mount. So I will go ahead and restore that data. It will give me the uh, sun warning because I have sun enabled within the app. So now I have the app open and uh, we could go into settings and I could uh, configure the Wi-Fi, uh, but I've already got that configured. So I'm just going to uh, go into there real quick and show you the status. Oh, it failed to read the status. Did I mention this app is just a little bit buggy sometimes? Okay, so I'm going to cancel that. And I'm going to go back to the to home screen. So I could do an alignment here. And so uh, if I go into alignment, I can go and I can say reset alignment. And that will forget the previously held alignment settings. And then the next uh, way I'll do an alignment is using what's called north level. And this is actually during the daytime, so it's not going to be entirely accurate, but we'll get as close as we can. And one of the advantages of this sync scan, um, the Wi-Fi dongle in the app, is that it uses the phone's GPS information. And if you have your mount set up so that you are facing north and, uh, and the tripod is perfectly level, is that you are basically aligned. And that's a really super cool thing. So I'm going to use um, Polaris as my first um, star to align to, which means that the mount should just go up in altitude. And then I'm going to use Jupiter, which is in the sky right now, to the south as my second alignment star. And so I'll go ahead and I'll begin an alignment. I have leveled my telescope and I pointed it north. And now it, can, it asks me to manually center Polaris and I'll just kind of bump this just to, you know, tell it that, that I uh, responded to that, which is actually kind of doing these sync settings, which we'll talk about a little bit later. All right, so now I'll go ahead and uh, say that that was a good alignment. And now the mount is rotating and going to where it thinks Jupiter is. You can kind of see a degree countdown there. And it asks you to manually center Jupiter. I'm going to say that it is already centered and I'll accept that alignment. So now we have a successful alignment and I can go to any other star that I want to or planet. If I go back to the main menu is that we can go to star here and we have solar system objects, named stars, even comets and double stars. So, um, If I were to pick uh, another nearby object, which is uh, Saturn is uh, very near Jupiter right now, is I could go ahead and go to Saturn and I can hit go to. And you can see that it doesn't have to move very far because we were just after the conjunction in, uh, in 2020. Okay, and so now I can, uh, I can again go to to, to just to make sure that that go to is completed. And then if I wanted to manually center, that would actually sync the, um, uh, the mount and make my alignment a lot more accurate. 
Now I'm going to go, go ahead and go back. And now if I want to basically park the scope, or which is, you know, the common nomenclature, and that is actually called hibernate the scope in uh, Skywatcher lingo. So I'll go to utility, and then I can go to hibernate. And then I could choose at home position. And that will return me to the north facing and level position on the mount. Okay, that saves that hybrid innate da uh, data for my location, and it also has the time uh, autom automatically updated. And so at this point, I can go ahead and turn off my mount, and it will remember my alignment, which is a super handy thing to do, and uh, so much better than using the handset and having to put in all kinds of information every time that you start up the mount. Okay, so that's just a quick introduction to the um, SyncScan app on the AllView mount by Skywatcher. If you like this video, you can go ahead and click on the like button right down there. And if you want to see more videos on things like the uh, AllView mount, uh, the SyncScan app, or astrophotography in general, please subscribe to my channel right down there. And if you want to get notifications, uh, click on the little uh, notifications button and you'll be notified next time I make a video. So this is Jay from Skylapser.com wishing you clear skies.